My name is Larry Sitsky. I'm currently Emeritus Professor and what they call Distinguished Visiting Fellow, which I always think is better than being an Extinguished Visiting Fellow. Um, as for my role, I continue really to do what I've done since the school opened. I have a few piano students. Uh, I, people come and see me for compositional questions. The odd um, musicologist or someone working on an aspect that they know I, I might be reasonably proficient in come and see me as well. And so it mirrors, in a way, all these things that I did uh, during my long time here at the school, I was foundation member and uh, came to Canberra in 1965 when the school opened in a little child-minding centre in Monaco. The child-minding is still much the same. You know, it's strange, I never officially applied for the job. Ernest Llewellyn knew me and we had performed when he was concertmaster of the SSO and I played the odd concerto with the orchestra. And the last time we had collaborated was the Ravel concerto where I got so fast that they couldn't keep up with me. So one of the first things that he said to me when eventually he rang, was, are you still as wild as ever? And I protested total innocence, of course, but I knew what he was talking about. What in fact happened was there was an advertisement for the foundation staff of the school. I was then teaching at the Queensland Conservatorium. And I saw the ad. I'd just come back to Australia from San Francisco and I had an American atlas. I opened it and it said Canberra, capital of Australia, population 15,000. And I thought, what am I going to do there? I'll go crazy. So I didn't apply. But what happened was a friend of mine, a violinist, applied and used a concert tape where I had played for him. And so, in a funny twist, he didn't get a look in, and a phone rang for him, and it was Ernie saying to him, thank you for applying. By the way, who was the pianist on the concert? <laughs> Which didn't impress him at all. But that's how it happened. And then he rang me and said, why didn't you apply? And I said, mm, population 15,000. He said, listen, will you come if I lay on a car and air tickets for yourself and your wife? Which he did. And I came in a big black car, met us, uh, and drove us around. And I realised that the place was going to boom. Because at that time, well, it wasn't 15,000, but it might have been 50 or somewhere thereabouts. Probably some of the performances that I did with Ernie, uh, they were enriching because it was a two-way thing. He was playing repertoire that he was familiar with, so it, it was standard stuff. On the other hand, I hadn't played that much classical music uh, because I was more interested in 20th century music. He didn't know that much about the 20th century, so it worked quite well. He would bully me to play yet another Beethoven sonata, but then I would seek retribution and say, well, yes, that's fine, Ernie, how about we play the Gerard Gemini for violin and piano? And you could see the kind of look on his face. But he did it, and that was fun as well, because he got to like it in the end. It's what Korsakov said to Stravinsky when 
Stravinsky brought him a Debussy score. Uh, a week later, he came for his lesson, and Korsakov gave him the score back. And Stravinsky said to him, what did you think of it? And Korsakov's reply was, mm, it's a bit dangerous. I found if you look at, at the score long enough, you get to like it. Music depends on tradition, it always has, and so when one teaches music, one passes on some kind of tradition that you've plugged into, particularly if you're teaching one-to-one, -one, which of course there's now less of happening here. But I'm conscious of the fact that my musical father and grandfather and so on are what made me. And so I'm passing on that legacy, the attitude to music making, the attitude to reading a score, uh, the attitude to our own history and our own culture. When I was a student in San Francisco, I realized that they knew nothing about Australian music. And so one of my first activities there at the San Francisco Con was to put on a concert of Australian music. And of course I put on a concert of music by my contemporaries. And they were kind of goggle-eyed because they thought we didn't have electricity and there were kangaroos running on the streets. So, but it's important because if we don't study our own culture and re record it and propagate it, no one else is going to do that. Because if we don't do it, we're saying to the world, it's not important. So that's been my attitude, together with these other inherited traditions. It's, it's been a kind of mission to play Australiana, record it, and write about it. Uh, I'm just fortunate that I've worn at least three hats through a long creative life, and I'm not willing even now to let go of any of the, of the hats. I like them. <laughs>